Uh, lastly, we'll go for uh, Dr. Osman Mahmoud, and he will talk about the TVAR for contained rupture, descending thoracic aortic aneurysm, state of the art. Does IVUS changes the preoperative planning? Dear Chairman, dear colleague, good evening. Thanks for this nice uh, invitation. I'm honored to be here today, and uh, we're going to talk about the war of contained rupture, distinct things, thoracic aneurysm. Does I was change the preoperative plan? And here we will present our uh, first experience with the first TVAR case in our Egypt and, and in our department, Asiut University. Uh, patient demographic data, male patient 75 years, a smoker hypertensive, uh, referred from the discrete hospital with severe chest pain and ability to take his press. Uh, the past history of this patient, uncontrolled hypertension, repeated attack of chest pain. Immediate assessment at uh, ER, uh, vital data, the patient was hypotensive, but pressure was 80 over 50. Uh, urgent chest x-ray revealed the uh, massive right hemothorax. Urgent multi slice revealed uh, contained rupture dissecting thoracic aneurysm. Uh, renal uh, function and liver function was normal. Our initial protocol was to uh, assessment of the patient vital data, then immediate protocol to keep the patient under hypotensive per perfusion technique to avoid more bleeding. And then urgent multi slice to assess emergency uh, assessment for TVAR possibility. And this is the, our uh, initial multi slice. Uh, for the detailed of multi slice, uh, revealed massive right hemothorax. And uh, we, if we look here, we can find the uh, different echogenicity and enhancement of the dye of the right hemothorax, revealed the uh, continuous bleeding, uh, large uh, distincting thoracic aneurysm, and the celiac artery uh, originating from the false leumin, but SMA from the true leumin. So the measurement and sizing is quite tricky for, our, for us because. If we look here to uh, uh, distant to the left subclavian, there is uh, extra aortic uh, 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 hematoma according to the CT. And uh, then uh, we try to do a uh, measurement. Uh, we have a tricky point. Should we uh, cover left subclavian, uh, do uh, continuous covering and debranching up to the SMA? or not. Uh, but uh, uh, when we consulted our uh, colleague from European different schools, uh, there was a different plan, either to do uh, debranching, left subclavian, distal debranching, SMA. But we decided finally to, uh, we found that we have this section as a at a typical site, type B dissection starting nine centimeter distant to the left subclavian. It's quite an uh, unusual site. And uh, our plan, uh, a, plan A, is to land that has a br uh, proximal landing zone five centimeter proximal to the tear. Then uh, extend the graph as much as we can distal uh, and uh, not to cover the celiac or SMA. Uh, and then we have also a backup uh, graft if we have endoleak or because we have another uh, opinion from European schools that we have multiple tear, entry tear. So we decided to use IVUS in that case. Intraoperative venogram showing uh, a leak and continuous bleeding. So we proceed to intravascular ultrasound IVUS assessment, which revealed uh, that's the proximal site where we were planning to put our landing, proximal landing zone, there was intramural hematoma. So we change, to, uh, change our idea to plan B to cover just distal, start our coverage from the left subclavian just distal to the left subclavian. This is the tear, uh, the section tear in the IVUS, that uh, true and false leumin, and here the celiac originating from the false leumin and the SMA from the true leumin. Post deployment, no more endoleak, and the graft nicely open and uh, distal flow. Uh, this is our post-deployment IVUS. Revealed patency of left subclavian because after deployment we we had the problem that's no pulse in the upper limb temporarily. 
So we proceed to uh, advance IVOS to assess if we cover the left subclavian or not. And the IVOS confirmed that the left subclavian is nicely open. And also the graft is nicely open. And this is the po uh, IVOS detail, left subclavian beaten, and the graft opened. Uh, one month post-operative, we had the multi-slice CT angiography uh, uh, revealed uh, a starting of expansion of uh, right lung, uh, quite decreased for right hemosorex, uh, because we had a problem and we consulted our cardiothoracic team, uh, should we evacuate this, this uh, hemosorex? And then, uh, so they decided to uh, evacuate this hemosorex using Uniport VATS evacuation, not using intercostal tube. And this is at one month, showing the graft nicely open and the uh, false lumen totally thrombosed, no endoleak. And this is the distal entry point. And uh, one point I forget that the IVUS confirmed that we have just only one proximal entry and one distal. So we uh, cover the proximal entry point and uh, we left this part. Uh, SMA originating nicely, and this is the 3D for the graft. A post-operative uh, remodeling, uh, this is a false lumen, mostly thrombosed, except the distal part. And this is a change in the diameter in the part of descending thoracic distal to the graft. A pre, it was uh, 1.5 centimeter, and post-operative, the true lumen expanded to 2.1. As a site of the stent, this is the diameter and the uh, pre-aortic hematoma. And this is the post uh, stent nicely open. Conclusion, intraoperative IVUS assisted TVAR is a clinically visible technique. And uh, combining IVUS with central line CTA provides a significant value either for the, uh, confirming the site of the wire, confirming if we, the landing, proximal landing zone, if it's healthy or if you have intramural hematoma or disease part. Uh, IVOS could help uh, to assess uh, the left subclavian. In the vascular repair of complicated type B dissection, uh, IVOS may help for underst understanding the dissection morphology, decrease the operative time, decrease the amount of contrast used. Um, IVOS could change the preoperative plan. Thanks.